In today's video, we're revisiting the Olo 3D printer campaign on Kickstarter that raised over $2 million back in March of 2016. So it's now um, 2018. Where are they now? Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makey's News and welcome back to another uh, Kickstarter Where Are They Now in the Wonderful World of 3D Printing Kickstarter campaigns. And I previously did a video with some other campaigns in it, but I figured I would leave Olo to its own campaign because this one is technically still going. They haven't delivered anything. Whether they are going to or not, we're not sure. They're still posting updates, albeit quite sporadically. And basically, looking through the comments, everyone is just pissed off. So, a bit of backstory. Uh, the Olo is a, is a very low-cost 3D printer. Actually, they priced it at $99. And it gets that price point because it uses your smartphone and the display on that smartphone to cure resin in a, in a sort of a SLA style 3D printing process, but it doesn't, doesn't use a resin that's UV cured. It uses a daylight sensitive resin, which means a phone can actually polymerize it. So this is a, this is a technology that in theory could be real and I'm not saying it's not, but the campaign is just has just had red flags from the beginning. And I made two videos on this when it first came out and the, the Olo team are very well aware of my existence. Um, and it's been pretty rocky from that point on. So I wanna go through what's going on with the campaign and my research into the technology itself. And I wanna leave you, if you're a, you've been a backer of this campaign with some other options, if this does not ship and you end up stuck and still wanting it a resin 3D printer, what's actually happened in you know the meantime since these guys have just not done anything? Because the industry is not stagnant, it does not stand still. And I'm gonna to touch on the fact that these campaigns, they take so long to get to market, but by the time they're at the market, they're not cutting edge anymore. They're actually behind the times and you've just funded their development. So anyway, uh, firstly, uh, you'll notice that it's no longer called Olo, it's called Ono, and that was like the first red flag uh, created by Olo 3D uh, Inc. here, and uh, they are an Italian team. So, Filippo Moroni and Pietro, uh, founders of Solido 3D in Italy, but they ran into uh, issues with the name, so they had to change it to Ono, which is why it's now Oh no, the first ever smartphone 3D printer. The campaign video is beautiful, very well shot, and convinced a lot of people that this was a very real product. Uh, I did have some, some skepticisms initially because they showed, for example, clear bottles with the daylight sensitive resin in it, stuff like that. It was all mock-ups and they did say that. They actually wrote me an email, I've lost it since, unfortunately, back then. But it was all mock-ups, you can see here. You know, these are mock-ups, obviously. But it sold the product and it sold $2,300,000 worth. So what went wrong? Why don't we have this product on the market now? Well, let's go to the updates. They have done a crap ton of updates, 50. Uh, but essentially, even the latest one from February the 10th, it's all been down to the control board issues. Now, it's a very simple product. In theory, you just have a small Z or Z axis motor and a plate and the smartphone has the app on it. That's the most complicated part, but your phone is doing all the work. The plate is just in the resin and just slowly moves up, uh, being controlled by a small control board. Initially, they were going to have this controlled by a headphone uh, jack. So that means you'd use audio signals, so basically digital uh, over audio, digital signals over audio to be transcribed by that, by that PCB and move up. Uh, but yeah, as I said, rate of progress, most smartphones these days don't have audio jacks anymore and they ran into huge issues with that early on. So now they're going through certification and that's their excuse for most of these campaign uh, updates. They, they had major board issues and they had to redesign from scratch and that was the end of last year. And then they had to do UL testing and they had pre-production boards testing and then they got certification. Now the latest, latest uh, campaign update here is, uh, is saying that they're moving forward on the UL front, we've made some good updates and they have, they have passed the UL safety, and then they're saying that it's been accepted. So, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's, it's all a bit fluffy, and I'm not saying that they haven't done UL certification, but it's just, to take this long is a bit strange, I'll be honest, because they've been at most major trade show, I'll, be, I'll, 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 I'll touch on in a minute. 
Uh, but let's have a quick look at the comments and I, I I just give you a warning, there is a lot of profanity in here, which is fair enough. So, some people are saying that, look, it is a Kickstarter campaign and it's not a pre-order, it's not a store. Yes, 100%. And this is my always hesitation with Kickstarter campaigns or any crowdfunding, you're not guaranteed a product. You're funding a, a vision uh, in the best case scenario or in the worst case scenario, an outright scam, which has happened many times on Kickstarter. You know, funds have been used to build houses, funds have just disappeared. So a lot of people are still hanging on to the fact that they've run into issues, but they're going to ship. But a lot of people are just absolutely, absolutely pissed off and they want their money back. So the big question on most people's minds would be, does this product even function? Like, can it actually work? And for a long time, I was really skeptical because they never had any working models at the trade shows. They always had some excuse like, oh, we're outdoors, so therefore the UVI, the daylight resin can't cure, or, you know, it's too, it's, there's not too many vibrations or whatever. I never talked to them personally about it, but basically never had a working prototype until New York World Maker Fair last year. And Make Magazine, uh, who run the World Maker Fair, uh, were like, basically, you need to prove to us this thing works. And they did. So they printed this product on the Ono 3D printer and it did actually function. They put the phone in, you put the resin on top with a thin film. I know that looks really, really iffy <laughs> with having, um, having that, you don't want the film to break, but nonetheless, they did show it actually functioning like that. So there you go. Props to the Ono team. It does actually work. This is not an outright scam and I was skeptical but it does actually function. However, it doesn't change the fact that they've run into many issues for delivery. And this does happen with Kickstarter campaigns where people can scale something up and then the tooling costs and mass production costs just chew through their budget and they run out of money before they can actually deliver. They end up with lots of parts like the peachy printer did, but they never delivered because of other things. So where does that leave you uh, as a backer of the campaign if you want a printer now and you don't want to keep waiting. Well, as I said, 3D printing has not been stagnant. It's moved forwards and we've actually got machines now which use a variation of SLA or DLP technology with resins that work really well. And it started with the Wanhao Duplicator 7. There was a few other versions before it, but essentially what these machines do is they have an LCD screen like your phone would have, but they have behind this LCD screen a very powerful UV light source, usually a very powerful UV LED. And they use this LCD screen to black off certain areas except where you want it to be exposed. And the, the UV goes through those areas into the resin and cures the layer. It's, it's actually genius how it works. And there's a new machine now called the Spark Maker, which is here, which is, as far as I'm aware, it was on Kickstarter recently. It's the cheapest machine to do this technology that I'm aware of, $289. It will go up, obviously. And I think on the Kickstarter campaign, it was even cheaper. But these, this is a proven technology um, that works in the Wenhal Duplicator 7. And a machine I can highly recommend right now, uh, because it's being tested by my trusted friends like Preston over at Press Reset, is the Anycubic Photon which is priced at $500 US, so it's not as cheap as the, o as the Yolo or Ono printer, but this is a ready-to-run unit using that, that LCD UV light technology, so it uses UV cured resins, which are a little bit easier to work with, I would say, than daylight cured resins. And again, they do exist, so here we go, here's Photocentric, which have their own type of printer, and this is their Photocentric Daylight Resin. So this resin, when you take it outside, it will start to harden. It heats up very quickly because it's, it's polymerizing. There's a, there's a reaction there. It is exothermic and it will harden in just normal daylight um, or under normal light. So working with these machines will be a little bit more difficult than working with UV curable resins, which need a fairly strong UV light source to actually begin curing. Like in this room, there's no UV light. I could work with a UV, 3D, a UV cured resin printer, no issue. But with a daylight resin, it would be a bit harder. I'd probably want to black it off a bit, have less lights, maybe even like a, uh, a setup like you have in a photography lab just to keep the light sources down because these resins do cure a lot quicker. So final thoughts on the Olo slash Ono 3D printer. I don't believe it was a scam. I think that they probably faked a lot of their first, comp their first campaign video and now are catching up. It has been proven to work at the New York World Maker Fair but that's no guarantee you're going to get the product anytime soon. So 
I would definitely not pre-order this system till the Kickstarter backers receive theirs. They actually offer pre-ordering on their website. I would not do that. If you want a resin-based 3D printer, I would personally recommend the Anycubic Photon currently right now. I actually might get one just to give it a good shot myself, but a lot of my friends are using this machine and like it. Or the Wanhao Duplicator 7 as well, it's quite popular. But honestly, resin 3D printers are not easy to use. They are messy. And if you are just getting into 3D printing, I don't personally recommend a resin 3D printer. I recommend an FDM because it's a lot safer to run FDM than it is to work with UV cured or daylight cured resins, which are actually toxic. Um, and you shouldn't touch them. And I would not trust them in an environment with animals, you know, pets or kids. Um, and you don't, you don't want to mess around with this sort of stuff. But that's going to do it, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video update on the Ono slash Olo campaign. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments below if you're a backer. Like, how's your experience been? What do you think? Uh, what do you think of the campaign? Do you think it will deliver or not? Uh, let me know in the comments below. And let, you know, let me know of any other Kickstarter campaigns you'd like me to revisit. There's been quite a few over the last few years. And uh, some of them are quite interesting in terms of how they, un how they developed. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, guys, I'd love to have you subscribe to Makers Muse. I am to empower your creativity with 3D printing. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit.